Chapter 2. Project Creation and Management. In this section of the Radiant Introductory Training Series, we will be discussing some of the basics for creating and developing projects using Lattice Radiant. Chapter 2 consists of five sections. In the first section of the chapter, called Creating and Opening Projects, the general process for creating Radiant projects and opening existing projects are covered. In section 2 of the chapter, Managing Project Files, we will introduce Radiant's File List tab and discuss the basics of using it for file management. In the third section of the chapter, called IP Catalog, we will discuss Radiant's IP Catalog and how it can be used to download and install IP. In the fourth section of the chapter, Implementing IP, the general process for generating an IP component and instantiating it in a design are reviewed. Finally, in the fifth section of the chapter, Using Source Templates, we will discuss Radiant Source Templates tab, and how it can be used to use Source Templates in Radiant Projects. Chapter 2, Section 2. Managing Project Files. In this section of the video series, we will be discussing some of the ways that users can manage the files in their Radiant Projects. Additionally, the process for adding files to a project is also covered. As was mentioned earlier on in the video series, Users can also add files to their projects after they have been created. Currently, there are four ways that files can be added to a project. The first way to add files to a project is to click the new file icon in the toolbar. This will open the new file creation window. The second way to add files to a project is to right-click a folder in the file list tab. From the drop-down that appears, users can either select new file or existing file. The new file option will open the new file creation window, while the existing file option will open a file explorer window. In the file explorer window, users will be able to select existing files to import to a project. The third way to add files to a project is using keyboard shortcuts. To do so, press Ctrl and then the N key on the keyboard. Doing this will also open the new file creation window. The fourth and final way files can be added to a project is using the drag and drop method. What this means is that files can be selected in a file explorer window and dragged directly to the file list tab. Depending on the extension of the file being added, it will be sorted to one of the existing folders in the file list tab. If a new file is added to a project, the new file creation window will appear. What this window looks like can be seen in the figure on the right of this slide. This window can be used to create various types of files for a Radiant project. To begin creating a new file, select the type of file you want to create in the source files area. If the type of file you want to create is not in the source files area, select a different category from the categories area. This will update the source files area with different types of files that can be created. Once a file type has been selected, the next step is to define a name and location for the new file. By default, new files will be saved to the directory of the current project. Next, the extension for the new file should be selected using the extension drop-down in the right side of the window. Finally, click the new button to finish creating a new file. One important thing to remember before creating the new file is to check the Add to Implementation checkbox. Doing this will add the new file to the selected implementation. If there are multiple implementations in a project, users will be able to select which to add their new file to. Now that we've discussed the ways files can be added to a Radiant project, we're going to discuss some of the ways these files can be managed. Every Radiant project requires a top module. Radiant will attempt to automatically determine which file is the top top module of a project. However, it is not always correct in doing so. The current top module of a project can be seen in the File List tab and the Project Hierarchy window. In the File List tab, the current top module will have its name in bold. In the Project Hierarchy window, the top module will be the file at the top of the window. There are three ways the top module for a project can be changed. The first way to switch a project's top module is to right-click the file of the new top module in the File List tab. From the drop-down that appears, select Set as Top Level Unit. Another way a project's top module can be changed is using the project's hierarchy view. To do this, right-click the file you want to set as the top module and select Set as Top Level Unit. The third way to switch a project's top module is using the project's implementation settings. 
Right-click the name of the active implementation from the File List tab, and select Set Top Level Unit from the drop-down list of options that appears. Doing this will open the settings for the selected implementation, with the Top Level Unit configuration option selected. Users can manually set the top-level file for their project by entering the name of the module in this field. One useful feature of Radiant projects is that files in an implementation can be included and excluded for specific processes. By default, all of the design files in a project are included for both synthesis and simulation. To switch the processes a file is included for, right-click the file you want to modify from the File List tab. From the drop-down that appears, select Include For, and then select the process you want to include that file for. If the process a project file is included for is changed, the Radiant process flow will have to be run again. Another way users can manage the files in their Radiant projects is to exclude or include files from an implementation entirely. Excluding a file from an implementation is functionally the same as excluding it from both synthesis and simulation. To exclude a file from an implementation, right-click the file you want to exclude from the File List tab. From the drop-down that appears, select Exclude from Implementation. Doing this will exclude the selected file from the current implementation. It should be noted that this exact process can be repeated to include a file that has been excluded, back into an implementation. That concludes this section of the introductory training series. To view the next video in the chapter, select the video titled Section 2.3, Configuring and Implementing IP.